So we literally sacked one of everything except for our queen. But we're going to sack our queen later. So far it's been rook, knight, bishop, and pawn. I, I might put this on YouTube. I, I might just put this uh, like discovering... I mean, discovering a gambit where we, we literally sack one of every piece. Lucini gambit. I know people are, are very thirsty for maybe lesser known, newer opening traps, given that everyone's learning the staffer these days. Opinion on Lucini gambit. Never heard of that, but I'll, I'll Google it. Ooh, Lucini gambit. So F5. Oh, I don't think I've seen this one. So it's very specifically after d3, f5. Let's go back. Um, so I've seen, there's another gambit where black plays f5 here. There's also, you can play f5 against a Spanish. This is actually respectable. This is a Schliemann. I went through a phase of, of playing this as black. Um, in tournament play. So I know f5 here is dubious because of d4 and Sockfish likes white. But bishop, okay, so bishop c5. Yeah, I'll, I'll say I've, I've never looked at this specific position. It looks interesting. It's like a, a reverse Vienna declined. Like white's committed to this. I have a feeling it's probably dubious. We can just turn on Sockfish and see if there's any clear refutation. Ooh, knight g5. Knight g5 plus 3 is, is not a good sign. And I think it's a pretty like it's a pretty straightforward move too. We would want to play knight h6, but then there's queen h5 and things are really bad. Oh, so GMD illusion giving a line. Knight g5, f4. Knight f7. Oh, interesting. Queen h4. Wow. If, if this is only plus one, and g3 is the only move, like queen e2, like so there's some other... At least queen e2 and queen f3. Oh, but then there's knight... Yeah, knight d4 is nice. Wow. Discovering a new opening here. I'm intrigued. I'm very intrigued. So most people castle. Wow. Oh yeah, castling is probably the most natural. Which has a, a bad score and computer says it's just better for black. Oh, so if castling we have this move and if takes we, um, this is very reminiscent of Stafford Gambit. And now it's minus five. That's so nice. Yeah, I think there's a there's probably a similar line in the the Vienna. I vaguely remember Levy showing it. It's probably in Levy's like E4 course. This is really cool. So this is called Lucini. Let's make a new study. Lucini Gambit. And then flip. So it's really, it's it's a very specific position though, with d3. Yeah, because most people play c3 or castle, but d3 is still, still if you play this as black and you want to have some fun, this might be worth learning. So the main trap we just saw is this, 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 and black's winning. And then if g3, might require some further investigation. So it's, it's I think, important to note that the computer initially evaluates it as like much better for white because it sees white swinging a rook, but then doesn't think deep enough to realize a knight's not useful on h8. So it's arriving at kind of a only slightly better for white, which is a good sign for black, especially given black's losing a rook here. So generally, like when I'm doing preparation into openings I haven't seen before, I'll just, I'll have the most popular move played be the main line, uh, rather than engine line. 
This looks really fun. D5. What a Standard move. Gambit is an anagram of format bad gifts. <laughs> wow. I think you're right. Format bad gifts. Great analysis, Bits. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Holy Grove. Look at this move. D5 out of nowhere. So Black just sacked a rook and now is sacking a pawn. But to accelerate accelerate control over the light squares. So apparently E takes D5 is the only non-losing move, which has never been played before. Only three games with Bishop takes D5. No games in the Masters database. Actually, let's check Masters database for this position. Wow. I'm actually, yeah, it's actually kind of surprising that no, no one has actually tried this in maybe serious over the board play. Because it seems so easy for white to fall into this. So let's see how bishop takes d5 loses. Oh, it's pronounced Lucchini. Oh, like Fiancato. People were insulting my pronunciation of Fiancato the other day. I could check this in chess base too. Lucchini Gambit is an anagram for Gambit Lucchini. Mm. <laughs> That's brilliant. Very brilliant. Okay, so why is this losing for... So why is bishop takes d5 losing? We got to this position. Let's make this a main line. Bishop g4. Stockfish giving queen takes g4 is the best move. But what if... Okay, queen d2? Knight d4, wow. Yeah, this is smashing. I don't think we need to look further. Like, there's no way white can stop knight f3. Queen g2 also coming. Like, all these pieces are just doing so much damage. And white's pieces are just not doing anything. Especially this knight. That's awesome. Okay, so this is winning for black. Okay, so let's look at this sign, because this is very similar. Where we still play knight t4, we're threatening this. Um, but this position has never been reached. Stockfish giving one non-losing move for white, which is c3, hitting the knight. And after this... Wow, it's just saying the position's a draw. After queen a4, bishop d7, and then players can repeat. Like bishop d7, queen d1, bishop here. That's so anticlimactic. Why is c3 the only move? Probably to prepare this. Um, otherwise, yeah, to explain this in like human terms. Um, when we play knight d4, the thread is bishop here, and then knight f3. So c3 does two things. It, um, it gives the queen one extra square, and it attacks the knight. So when we, when we play bishop g4, um, the queen develops with check, and black's not actually having time to get this move in. And if we do something else, I assume the knight's hanging. But it's still interesting. So Stockfish also suggesting king f8. Sacking the knight. Keep in mind, we've already sacked the rook and the d-pawn. Now we're sacking a knight. In this position, white still has all the pieces that white started with. White has all eight pawns, all the minor pieces, all the rooks. But black's better. Black's better after fg3, taking the first pawn of the game. This is actually bananas. I had to throw out the banana from earlier from the thumbnail. It was so bruised. It'll be remembered, though. So we don't even take this. We take on g3. What is this? That's crazy. F takes g3. Wait, Stockfish very confused. That's so amazing. It was giving, it almost gave like plus six for white, but now it's giving black is winning somehow. But how? Okay, so the h-pawn's pinned. The bishop's hanging. So white's best move is to take the bishop. Okay, so black has sacked a rook, the knight, and then the bishop. And only won a pawn so far. Oh, but white's winning. 
but it's complicated. Okay, so G takes F2. Man, Sockfish is so confused here. King D2. And now Queen G2. So the, the issue why like Stockfish is fluctuating, because at low depth it just counts material. It sees whites up all these pieces, but then realizes that concretely, like black threats are very strong. I could open up chess space and we, we can check with a slightly stronger engine, but I think this is this is good enough to like get us through the line as long as we keep going. And sometimes this is what you have to do when working with an engine, like you have to guide it through like playing the best moves. Um, so here, okay, we're threatening to queen with discover check. So king c3 is really the best try. Then we take the rook. And again, we're threatening to queen, we're threatening the bishop. So only move, yeah, it's, it seems like an only move variation, knight d2. Like so far, the last maybe five moves have been only moves for each side. Now we play queen e1. This is so insane. Thanks so much, GMD Illusion, for exposing this variation. Like, this is just hidden beauty. It's so crazy. So we we pin the knight, uh, and the knight's pinned from behind. And the problem is if the king, so the king can't access these squares because bishop d1 invading white's first rank. Love from India. Your streams are top quality, Eric. Oh, thanks so much. Aman Mittal, 13, appreciate that. No, now, now, like, after seeing this analysis, I'm dreaming of playing this in the game. Like, this is so cool. So we're threatening to queen. The knight's pinned. The king can't move here or here. Moves here, it's still pinned. And our, our um, clutch e5 pawn preventing king d4. So the best try for white, according to the engine, Oh, is, um, yeah, there's d4 to control f1. Let's look at d4 first. Man, it's just like a, um, a mesh of pieces. Just a cluster. White has no harmony, like, among these pieces. And just a knight randomly on h8. So we play queen e3. Bishop d3. King, king b4 is a funny line. King b4 here. King b5, we take. Yeah, bishop d7 incoming. Bishop d7 here, this is some some mating idea. And black's threatening maiden two. So best try is bishop d3. Oh, but bishop d3. I like this move e4. e4 is so nice. Because the bishop's pinned, and the knight is tied down to guarding f1. If knight takes him, we queen, because the bishop's still pinned. Oh, but we can't do that because our queen's hanging. Wait. Whoa, we sack a queen. Only winning move for black is to sack the queen here. And then the queen is reborn just to keep initiative. How many pieces has, has black sacked in this line? Wait, slow motion replay. Okay. We, we need to internalize what just happened. So, this is very deep theory. We start with f5. We, we bait white, or maybe just bait white, into playing knight g5. We're, we're threatening this, uh, this fork. It looks really good for white. But then f4, knight f7, queen h4. So threatening maiden 1. Um, g3. Okay, so the first sacrifice is a rook. So we're down a rook. And then d5, sacking... A pawn. So we're down a rook and a pawn. And we play bishop g4, we play king f8. Another sacrifice, so we're down a, a knight, rook, and pawn. Okay, we win back something. But then we sack a bishop. So we literally sacked one of everything except, except for our queen. But we're going to sack our queen later. So far it's been rook, knight, bishop, and pawn. And then if we go forward with this main line, okay, we win back the rook. And then, so after e4, in this position, we sack our queen to promote the pawn. And then it's winning somehow. I think we're just, 
or just winning everything and the queen is useless and so is the rest of the pieces. Uh, king, we can analyze king c3, queen f3, king d2. So king d2, we don't even take the knight, we play rook e8, which is winning. There's just too much, too many mating threats. And then if king c4, then we take the knight and um, did we win back all the material? So we, we get to a position where we're only down a pawn. But white's king is on c4, there's bishop e2 ideas. And white's just dead. And the knight's stuck, knight f6 coming. Wow. Okay. Um, I mean, there, there's definitely more to analyze in this line. But this, this main line that we have is just, it's simply incredible. And um, I, I might put this on YouTube. I, I might just put this uh, like discovering, I mean, discovering a gambit where we, we literally sack one of every piece, Lucini Gambit. I'll have to do more analysis. If you're watching in the future on YouTube, I'll link the study. I'll probably, like by the time I post this video, I'll have more, more analysis but it's such a cool gambit. Um, there might be other lines where white's actually better, but keep in mind, like the top stockfish move. Okay, now it's not even recommending knight, knight g5. It was recommending knight g5 earlier. Um, and it's a very human move too. I played 233 times. So, okay, I hope maybe some people can find value value in this, maybe play it in their own games, see how it goes.